Ruchma Boyim, welcome to our home, and again, thank you for attending. Um, again, we are in the uh, Amida series, and again, this will be a deeper understanding of the Amida. Again, this is the 10th lecture, and so this week on my thoughts, we will continue in our in-depth discussion of the Amida with the ninth blessing in the prayer. Now, this is also the sixth of the 13 personal requests that we offer uh, to God Almighty Deity, except on the Shabbat and the Yom Tov. In this prayer, we request of God, our Father in Heaven, to Barech to bless on our behalf. The Talmud, the Tractate of Megillah, states that the men of the Great Assembly purposely made this blessing number nine to correspond to the prayer in the ninth chapter of the book of Psalms, which states, Break the strength of the wicked. In this psalm, Dovinamal, King David, condemns those who price gouge in order to benefit themselves at the expense of the masses. It's very logical that this blessing follows the previous request for good health, as it states in Pirkei Avot, in the Ethics of the Fathers. Ben Zoma, he asked the question, who is rich? He answers, someone who is content with what they have. Now the Hebrew word for rich is asher, which is spelled ayin, shin, yud, and resh. These four letters are an acronym for enayim, your eyes, shinayim, your teeth, yodayim, hands, and raglayim, feet. Since without good health, well, all the money in the world is useless. In addition to the words Sameach Bechelko, happy with what you have, is stated in the present tense. This teaches us an important lesson on how to be content with the life that we live. Many of us are stuck in either the past or in the future. The only way for a person to be truly happy is to live in the moment, in the present. There's a saying that the past is history the future is a mystery, and all that we have is the present, which is why we call it a present. Since nothing is an accident, the fact that this request is both the ninth blessing and the sixth request is really very apropos. Our sages tell us that the number nine alludes to truth, and the number six, again, alludes to, fal alludes to falsehood. In the English language, there are these two numbers are really very simple similar, six and nine, in shape and in form. So too, when it comes to investing, it's not always easy to ascertain whether an investment will prosper or, or lose money. So we are asking God Almighty to grant us a true and lasting prosperity, and not temporary gains, those that are here today and gone tomorrow. Success <clears throat> requires your active participation, in addition to perseverance. Not willing to stay the course, impatience, well, will many times negate any chance of a long-term success. There is a reason why people say that Rome wasn't built in a day. We ask the Lord our God to bless this year. The Talmud and the Tractate of Beitzah teaches us that on Rosh Hashanah, on the Jewish New Year, God Almighty determines how much money we will receive in the upcoming year. Many times, you know, we're so worried about the long term that we forget to stay focused and enjoy the moment. This is why the blessing states, Es Hashanah Hazot, this year. The importance of, again, living in the present. In fact, the Hebrew word for, for Zot is an acronym for Zohar Al Tishka. Remember, do not forget. The Holy Baal Shem Tov teaches us that every day, God Almighty decides on how much pleasure and satisfaction each person will derive from the possessions that they already possess. So each and every day, we must pray to God for daily satisfaction. Rabbi Yosef Zoyal Horowitz <clears throat> would say, a person must relinquish all of their tomorrows for just one day, lest he 
come to relinquish all of his todays for just one tomorrow. As an interesting aside, the mission in the Tractate of Paya teaches us that a person who has a net worth of 200 zuz or more is ineligible for the agricultural gifts that are given to the poor. The commentaries explain that the rabbis calculated that 200 zuz was enough money to sustain a person's basic living expenses for one whole year. Now, the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word tzedakah, charity, is 199. So if a person's net worth is below the established poverty line of 200 zuz, they are considered poor and are then permitted to accept tzedakah, charity. A couple of years ago, my wife and I were planning to spend the holiday of Pesach in Atlantic City on a Pesach retreat. We had paid all the money. up front. Well, five days before the holiday was to begin, the program was canceled, and our money was never refunded. We lost the money, or did we? You know, my wife said that we didn't lose the money, we just didn't use the money. Strangely, I felt sorrier for the organizer of the program than I did for myself. You know, losing a person's shame tobe, good name, is much worse than losing any amount of money. I believe completely in the concept that God Almighty decides on Rosh Hashanah exactly how much money you will earn in the upcoming year. So if the money that was lost was really mine, well, then it became God's responsibility to replace it. And if the money was not meant to be mine in the first place, well, then I lost nothing. You know, as a businessman, most of the money that goes through my hands is not mine to keep. It pays for all of my operating expenses. All that is mine is what falls to the bottom line. Now, I don't lament over that which is not my profit. The prayer continues with the Eskol Mine Tuasa Litova and all kinds of produce for the best. You know, the mun, the spiritual food that fell from heaven daily, sustained the Jews in the desert for 40 years. It was viewed as a blessing. We are told that it had the ability to taste like anything that you wanted, with few exceptions. Still, in the end, it always looked like mum. God Almighty blesses us with all kinds of produce that he has created for our culinary enjoyment, natural food, made up of various colors, textures, and aromas meant to satisfy not only our palates, but also our eyes. A gift from a benevolent father turning a necessity of life into one of our greatest enjoyments. You know, just like the mud, our money is also a blessing from heaven. In fact, if you take the Hebrew word mud and you add the letter yud to it, it then becomes money. When saying the words, all kinds of produce for good, our sages tell us that we should have in mind wheat for matzah, an esrog, a citron for Sukkot, and wine for Kiddush. These three items represent all the ways that vegetation is produced from the earth. Wheat grows from the ground, an etrog grows on a tree, and wine comes from grapes that are grown on a vine. This concept was also repeated when a person brought a sacrifice in the Holy Temple. Almost all sacrifices were accompanied with a meal offering. All the offerings consisted of either wheat or barley, which grows uh, from the ground. The meal offering was most often mixed with oil, which is produced from olives that grow on a tree. It was also accompanied with wine libation that was poured on the altar. Grapes grow on a vine. So we witness that all forms of nature were represented on the altar of God in the temple. 
The next line that we recite changes with the summer and with the winter. During the summer months, we say, Vesein Brocha, which means, and give blessing. This is a request for a dew, a blanket of water that gently covers the earth. And then in the winter, when rain is essential to grow the crops in the field, we add the words, Vesein Tal Umater, which means, and give dew and rain. So that in addition to the dew, we request that we receive rain, the sperm of creation that brings about all of our blessings. Al Paneho Adama, upon the face of all the earth, not just locally, we have never truly appreciated the fact that the world that we live in today is a neighborhood more than we have again today. Our sages tell us that the words, the face of the earth, is an allusion to the land of Israel. We witness that somehow whatever happens in the land of Israel affects the whole world. We recognize that in some way all the fortunes of the world are connected. That being the case, one should find it difficult to find personal joy and satisfaction while others around the globe are suffering. He continues with the words, and satisfy us from your bounty. The Yaros Devash states that we ask God Almighty to satisfy us from his bounty, meaning not from earnings which we are not entitled to. I also believe that we are requesting that God Almighty should help us to be satisfied with our lot in life and not be motivated by greed. The Vilna Gaon stated materialism. Materialism is much like salt water. The more that you drink, the thirstier you become. The Talmud states that the two most difficult things for a person to be are rich and poor. Common denominator, time. Time is a double-edged sword. It can make you or it can break you. The fact that the men of the Great Assembly chose to make this request the ninth prayer in the Amida is not an accident. As I've mentioned previously, the number nine always alludes to truth. The Talmud in the Tractate of Shabbat states that, a per that on the Day of Judgment, the first question that a person is asked by the heavenly court is, were you honest in business? Greed is one of the hardest challenges for a person to overcome. Prosperity comes with certain challenges, such as arrogance. As it states in the portion of Akev, where it states, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me all this wealth. It also creates a need to maintain and protect your property. As it states in Perkyovo, the ethics of the fathers. He who increases his possessions increases his worries. A secret of life, travel light. In Mishle, in Proverbs, it states that he who hates gifts shall live. The Talmud in the Tractate of Sota teaches us that we pray to God, our benevolent Father in Heaven, that our blessing for sustenance should come to us directly from His hands. It is our hope and prayer that we should not be forced to depend upon the gifts of others, which will shorten our years and diminish our quality of life. As we request of God in the fourth paragraph of the Grace After Meal, the Benching, do not make us dependent upon the gifts of other people, nor their loans, but only upon your full, open, holy, and generous hand, so that we may never be shamed or disgraced. The prayer continues with the words, And bless our year like the best of years for blessing. We ask God that his benevolence should be distributed evenly throughout the year. For example, let's say it was decided by heaven that you should make $120,000 this year. Imagine if you were to receive $60,000 in the first month and then another $60,000 in the second month, but nothing else for the rest of the year, well, it would not be a blessing. Or what if the opposite was true? If you earn nothing for the first 10 months, 
and then 60,000 for each of the last two months, again, it wouldn't be a blessing. So we ask God Almighty that our blessings should be distributed evenly, $10,000 a month throughout the year, so that we can live comfortably without worry. We pray to him that our blessings should be constant, like the best of the years. Kikel tovu metiv atom As it states for you are a generous God who bestows goodness and blesses the years. There's no mention of Israel here, since the blessing of the year is a benefit to all people. And now, although it states in the portion of Ayetze that God Almighty told Avmavinu, Abraham our father, that all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you and your seed. But the Torah is telling us that the children of Israel are the source of all the blessings that we all receive through the years. The prayer ends with the words, Blessed are you, God, who blesses the years. I believe that this wording is very concise. One of the greatest challenges that we face in life is impatience especially today, where we expect everything to happen now, immediately. The two biggest sins in history can be traced back to impatience. Adam, first man eating from the tree of knowledge, and then the children of Israel making the golden calf. Both of these transgressions brought death to the world. So in this prayer, we are requesting financial success and economic security. However, the belief in God is not enough to succeed. We must be active participants in the process. It is true that success belongs to God alone. But there is a saying, God helps those who help themselves. Expecting God to do all the heavy lifting will usually result in a total failure. When Adam, first man, ate from the tree of knowledge, his punishment was, from the sweat of your brow, you will eat your bread. Now, though it sounds like a punishment, I believe that it was really a blessing. In the Talmud in the Tractate above Messiah, Rav Kahana said that a person would rather have one bushel of his own wheat than nine bushels of someone else's. We also read in the second paragraph of the Shema Yisrael, Hero Israel, that if you serve God with all your heart and all your soul, well then you will gather your grain your wine, and your oil. We witness that today people plant tomatoes, even though you can buy them daily at the supermarket. And they usually wind up with more tomatoes than they can eat. So they give them to their friends and neighbors. The gift is usually accompanied with the words that these tomatoes, well, they taste just like gold. But somehow to us, mm, they taste just like a tomato. God gives us the opportunity to reap the benefits of our labor. The same is true of our portion in the world to come. God, our benevolent Father in heaven, can and will give us all a portion in paradise. However, he first allows us the possibility of earning our reward. Earning our reward is heaven. Receiving it as a gift from God may well be hell. As it states in the portion of Toldo, and Yitzhak planted in the land and received in that year Mea Sha'orim, a hundredfold. For God Almighty had blessed it. The Shiboli Haleket quotes a Medrash that states, When the ministering angels saw Yitzhak's bounty, they chanted, Blessed are you, Hashem, Mevorach Hashani, who blesses the years. In this blessing, we acknowledge that God Almighty alone is the source of all of our blessings throughout each and every year. So bottom line, let us pray to God, our benevolent Father in heaven, that he blesses us with financial success so that we can serve him out of joy and not sorrow, as it states in Pirkeovos, the ethics of the fathers. Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah said, Im ain kemach, ain tov, that if there's no flower, then there can be no tov. May God Almighty bring about a quick and decisive end to the war in Gaza with a complete victory over Hamas and Hezbollah in addition to all the evil that exists in the world today. May he bring home all the hostages safely, cure all the sick and injured, and comfort all the mourners. May he bring home all the brave IDF soldiers safely led 
by Mashiach Sakenu quickly and in our time and let it be now. Again, let me thank you for attending, for listening. Again, God should bless you and yours with all that's good. You should be safe, healthy, and prosperous. In addition, again, if you uh, find time, there are lecture, a couple lectures on YouTube or on my website, whatever, wherever you listen, on um, the month of Elo, again, it's a double lecture. I think it's worth listening to if you have the time to do so. Again, please, uh, if you have not, subscribe, push the like button, and share with your friends. Again, God should bless you that this month of Elo should be special. And again, with that, we should bring Mashiach. God bless and be well. Thank you again for attending.